Hello, I'm Luke Cross, and welcome to another Baselight Insight on MixingLight.com. In this insight, I'm going to show you how to stabilize footage within Baselight. So we're going to use a transform strip and an area tracker, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get the best result possible in your scene. Let's jump into it. So to start us off today, we have three shots in the timeline. And as I play these through, you'll see that they all have a considerable amount of camera shake. The first two shots are dynamic, so they've got a bit of a camera move to them. And this last shot is a static shot, but they're all shaky. So we're going to look at stabilizing all three of these shots today. Before we jump into stabilizing, there are two things that are very helpful to set up at the start of the process. The first thing to do is to give us a little bit of breathing room here. I'm going to expand out my image display and holding down command, middle mouse button, drag to the left. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to jump down to my cursor view and add a guide. And I'm just going to add a full area guide here. Okay, so now we can see the borders of our image very clearly. The second thing that I want to do before we get into it is I want to make sure my transform alarm overlay is active. The transform alarm overlay can be found in display, show transform alarm overlay, and you can set the color of this overlay here. And what this does, if we add a transform strip, I'm just going to go up to the insert menu and add a transform strip. If we introduce blanking in this image, so for example, I'm going to scale the image down, the transform alarm overlay shows you that there's blanking in the image. If I turn this off, you can see that there's blanking in this image on all four corners. So if we keep the show transform alarm overlay on throughout this process, it becomes really clear if we've accidentally introduced any blanking into the image. I'm going to go ahead and delete this transform strip. I'm going to go to the playback controls here and change my range to current shot. This will loop my current shot. So if I want to stabilize this shot, the first thing to do is to add a transform strip. As we saw before, you can add that via the insert menu but the shortcut key for that is shift T. So I'm going to hit shift T on my keyboard and hit Z to jump back to the first frame. This particular shot has quite a high judder on the Y axis. So this would be nearly impossible to fix by trying to manually keyframe, but there will be a lot of cases where if your camera is drifting slowly over time, you might be able to fix it just using the transform strip. So I'll show you how to do that now. To create a keyframe on the X position parameter, I'm going to click the add keyframe button. You can see down on the keyframe bar, we have a notch indicating that this is an active keyframe and our transform strip now has a keyframe icon on the right hand side. The keyframe mode is currently set to S curve. So what I'm actually gonna do is hit the shift key and click all linear. Holding down the shift key allows you to adjust the keyframe mode for all the parameters at once. Using the keyframe bar, I'm just going to scroll along to the end of the shot, and I'm just going to adjust the X position here. This automatically creates a new keyframe. I'm going to jump back to the beginning of the shot with Z, hit spacebar to play, and you can see that we've successfully keyframed this parameter. Again, not very helpful on this shot, but there are quite a few contexts where adding a few keyframes on the X and Y axis will just uh, iron out a little bit of camera drift on a shot. So useful to know how to keyframe. To remove these keyframes I've made, I'm going to toggle that keyframe off. I'm going to jump to my next keyframe with the right square bracket button on the keyboard. And I'm going to toggle that off too. Finally, I'm just going to reset my X position. Okay, so how do we fix the high judder motion of this shot? You can see down below the image transformation settings that there's a tracking subpanel. There are three different trackers that we can use on this shot. I'm going to jump back to the first frame and click the area tracker. And you can see it creates a tracker strip in the timeline. And it gives me a tracking bounding box that I can manipulate on the image display here. The reason why I'm putting my area tracker over here is that I don't want the motion of her hands affecting the track. I have my tracking options on the top right and I'm just going to track forwards. Now you can see the initial track here has introduced quite a lot of blanking and will need to be adjusted quite heavily before this is usable. So let's just position our cursor in the middle of this shot here. And at the top of the parameters view, there's a return to transform button, which I'm gonna click. Now that we have an active tracker interfacing with the transform strip, you can see that we have some options here. We can unlink and delete the tracker. 
and we can also jump up to the tracker strip. Down below you have your stabilization options. You can see we have our stabilize applied and the stabilize is affecting the scaling, rotation, X and Y translation. What I want to do for this shot is eliminate that Y axis judder, that high frequency judder. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to untoggle scaling, rotation and X translation and just play this through to see what happens. As I play this down, you can see that our stabilize is really targeting that high judder, but it is introducing blanking down the bottom of our image here, and at the top of the image at the beginning of the shot. To eliminate this blanking, what we could do is just on our image transformation settings, we could guesstimate how much we need and scale in, and that's about right, and play it back. And there we go, that shot's looking a lot more stable, but there's a slightly better way of doing it. I'm going to reset my scaling values here. The best way to remove blanking from a stabilization is if we jump over to the camera section of the transform strip and we toggle this remove image borders button. I'm going to click this now. This button automatically scales in to remove all blanking from your stabilization and is a really handy trick that'll save you a lot of time. I'm going to jump back to my image tab jump back to the start of the shot and hit spacebar. Playing this down, you can see that's really helped stabilize this shot. Okay, so now we know what we're doing, let's apply this technique to the other two shots in the scene. I'm gonna start off with Shift T to add a transform strip, and I'm just gonna play this down to analyze it here. Reviewing this shot, it actually might be a little bit tough to use the area tracker, because of all the motion that our actress is doing in the center of frame. In this case, I might try a two point tracker and we won't really go into this one, uh, but as you can see, we have two tracking points here, which I'm gonna position on the two corners of the screen. Leave a comment below if you guys want to dig into the one and two point trackers in a separate insight. And we're gonna track this forward. We'll toggle back to our transform strip and we'll play this down. The first thing you'll notice is it's removed the scale in, which was the intent of the shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the scaling and see if that fixes the issue. Okay, there we go. Now we're retaining the push in, which was the camera movement that was intended on set, but we're fixing the rotation, X and Y translation judders. Finally, to clean this up, we'll jump to the camera tab and we'll remove image borders. And our shot is looking a lot more stable. Okay, so let's try one more stabilization, but this time we're gonna dig into the filtering controls that we have access to after we've tracked our image. So again, let's hit spacebar and review this shot. If I go ahead and create myself an area tracker and position it up the top left hand corner of the screen here, let's track this down. Oh, and as you can see, that area tracker was a little bit too wide, so it was actually interfered with by the actress's movement. Let's play this down and see what the final result is. Okay, so you can see how important it is to position your area tracker on a portion of the frame that is representative of the motion of the shot. Obviously, the actress's head movement is not part of the camera movement, so that's why we're seeing this rather drastic zoom in here. Well, Command-Z this and we'll make this a lot smaller and hopefully this fixes the issue. There we go. Okay, as you can see, we're still getting some pretty major wobbling on the sides here. So what we're gonna do is Command Z this and add a two point tracker instead to see if it gives us any better results. So I'm gonna position my second tracker here my first tracker here, and go ahead and track this through the scene. Okay, let's see if this gives us a better result. So as you can see, this shot is still very janky, so let's see if we can do some fine tuning adjustments to make this shot a little bit better. I'm gonna to go to my transform strip, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove scaling and rotation, and we're just gonna play this back and see what that does.
Okay, that's helped a little bit, but it's still pretty unpleasant to look at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the filtering tab and you can see we have three sliders here that we can adjust. The shake noise slider restores some of the faster, higher frequency, more random motion elements to our shot. If the stabilization has done too good of a job and we wanna bring back some of that natural higher frequency motion and judder, we can bring this back. The motion slider restores some of the slower, smoother underlying camera movements to the shot. The threshold slider allows you to adjust the separation between the lower frequency motion of the shot, those slower, smoother movements, and the faster, shakier motion, that higher frequency judder, and fine tune the entire overall effect using this threshold slider. So this is a really fun thing to have a play with, especially if your stabilization isn't quite doing what you expect it to do. Now this stabilization is a bit weird. The high judder, it's almost like it's introducing a little bit of judder. So let's go ahead and bring in some of that motion, see if that helps fix anything. Not really. How about if we introduce some shake and noise? Weirdly, that does help a little bit. And we can play with the threshold as well. And that's looking a little bit better. This two point track might not have done a very good job. So these tools might be operating a little bit strange, but it's great to be able to restore some of the original high frequency judder using the shake and noise slider, some of the original camera movement with the motion slider, and to be able to fine tune the balance between these two with the threshold slider. To finish, I'll jump over to the camera tab and remove those image borders and hit play. So still a little bit shaky, but it's it's better than it was. And that's stabilizing footage within Baselight using a transform strip and an area tracker and a two-point tracker. But again, we'll really dig into the one-point and two-point trackers in another insight. I hope you found that insight helpful. As always, I am monitoring the comments down below, so definitely leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll catch you in the next insight. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.